Well, hello. This is a, another lesson for the fifth graders at Marion Mix Elementary School. And this one's on multiplication patterns. And it goes with lesson 1.5 of Go Math. And our learning intention is that you can use some basic multiplication facts that you already should have known. And then use powers of 10 patterns. And the powers of 10 patterns all involve zeros, like counting zeros and knowing how many zeros to write on the end of a number. Uh, and if you could see the pattern, this will be no problem for you. This, by the way, is something that needs to be mastered fast. If you're not already at that point, you've got to practice it. You have to be able to multiply and multiply efficiently and quickly, or else accessing the higher uh, levels of math is going to be nearly impossible. So uh, let, let's get after it, okay? Uh, Student success today is that you can use some powers of 10 patterns to multiply the whole numbers, right? So uh, if you see something like uh, 500 times 40, you are not going to set it up in the traditional algorithm. Even though you can, uh, it, this, that, that's not the lesson, right? The lesson is finding a pattern. That's not a pattern. That's the, the traditional algorithm. So you'll know you're successful if you don't do that, if you use the strategies that I am demonstrating. All right, so you need to know your basic multiplication facts. We already went over that. And you'll hear powers of 10. And really, like, powers of 10 are, it sounds more important and harder than it really is. One power of 10, that's just multiplying by 10, right? And that's written as 10 to the first power. Two powers of 10 is written as 10 to the second power. That just means multiplying by 10 twice. So you multiply something by 10 and then take that and multiply it by 10 again. And then 10 to the third power is three powers of 10. That equals, you know, 10 times 10 times 10. Three times, or you multiply it three instances of 10, and that's just 10. Uh, and the reason why I, I uh, go over this is because you're going to see powers of 10 and you're going to hear it, um, you know, in different ways. And... Uh, it seems to be very, very confusing, but, you know, 10 to the second power is the same thing as two powers of 10, no matter how you hear it. And uh, hopefully by the end of this lesson, you'll have heard it in a couple of different ways, and you'll realize, oh, that's just the same thing as what he was already talking about. All right, here's the notes for lesson 1.5, and that is uh, that 10 to the first power is 110. That's one power of 10. That's just 110, right? 10 to the second power is 10 times 10, which is 100. So these are the answers of what I already wrote over here. And then 10 to the third power is uh, 1,000. And here is the pattern. All right, I'm going to go over the pattern right now. Uh, the pattern is that when you're multiplying 10 with an exponent of 1, <coughs> you will see that the answer has 1, 0 on it. When you see something's multiplied by 10 to the second power, the answer will have two zeros on the end of it. When you see something that's multiplied by 10 to the third power, the answer will have three zeros on it. And then what you can do is say, well, what about 10 to the seventh power? How many zeros do you think will be on that? Well, there'll be seven of them, of course. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, with a one on the front. And so it's 10 to the seventh power is 10 million. All right. That's true. What about this? 10 to the 23rd power. How many zeros? Of course, they're going to be 23, but I'm not going to write them all out right now. All right, for these problems, they seem like they're, they're big, hard problems. Like this is three digits times three digits. This is three digits times two digits. But we are going to break them down to make them a little bit easier for you to do mentally. So we have to do a couple of things to understand how to do this. One is, we are going to identify the basic fact in these problems. So that's going to be our first task. Find and do the basic fact. In 40 times 600, the basic facts are the numbers of the digits that are not zero, right? So on one factor, it's a four. And on the other factor, it's a six. What we do is we take those two first, and we multiply them together. 4 times 6, and we write the answer. So 4 times 6, I'm pausing because you should be thinking of it. All right, it is 24. And then the pattern here is I take the zeros 
from both factors and write them on the end of the number. That's how we can do this mentally. It's basic fact that you know and then taking the pattern which is the zeros off of the two factors and writing them onto the product. So there's one from that, that's that one, and then I'll write the two others, there's one and another. So 40 times 600 is 24,000 and I got that from multiplying the basic fact and then using powers of 10. Powers of 10. And I'm going to put that in parentheses, uh, adding zeros onto a number. I'm going to abbreviate number because I'm almost out of space. Adding zeros onto a number. All right, let's do that same uh, skill, apply the same skill to the next problem. All right, so if you have a highlighter, all of these things um, are are good to highlight also. So you can use your pencil and you can uh, organize your thoughts that way. But if you have a highlighter, you can also organize your thoughts this way. So if I identify the basic fact of 500 times 40, it's going to be 5 times 4. Because again, I'm taking the digits that, that aren't zeros and I'm going to multiply them together first. So 5 times 4 is 20. Now that already has a zero on it. In this situation, a lot of students want to say, well, I already wrote one of the zeros, so I don't have to write all three of these extra ones. But really, it's 20 is the basic fact when I multiplied 5 times 4. So I write that basic fact, then I write all the zeros on the end of that number. So there are one, two, three more zeros that I need to write on the end of this basic fact. So I will add my three zeros, add my comma. 500 times 40 is 20,000. All right, can you pause the video and try to do this one on the paper and then play the video and I'll show you exactly how I did it. All right, pause. All right, welcome back. So the uh, problem is that you are going to be finding is the basic fact, right? So we're going to do the base basic fact first. 7 times 9, we're going to multiply that first. Then we're going to write in all the zeros. So 7 times 9 is 63. Uh, and then we're going to write one, two, three, four zeros on it. One, two, three, four zeros. Put the comma after three. Seven hundred times nine hundred is six hundred thirty thousand. All right, these notes right here. I would write them on the page somewhere close to the problems that you're doing as a reminder of what you're supposed to do. Now the next set of problems. Whoops, I went one too many. The next set of problems is using mental math in the pattern again, right? But in this case, they kind of break it down for you already. So you might see something like 7 times 8 equals 56. They give you the basic fact. And by the way, this is on page 22. This is number 3, so we're uh, working out of the book. And you can get your book page open right now and then continue. So in the first instance here, you're taking the basic fact 7 times 8, which is 56, and then multiplying by 10 to the first power. And here is the pattern when you are multiplying by 10 to the first power. It just means a 1, uh, a one zero on the end of your basic fact. Remember, 10 to the first power equals 10, right? So if I was going to write that out as a number, I could scratch that out and put 10. And we already know that when I'm multiplying something times 10 or 100, I just take the 0 and write it on the end of the basic fact. Right, the basic fact is 7 times 8, which is 56. So write that. And then we're going to multiply, or excuse me, we're going to write the 0 from the 10 on the end of the number. Or you're going to see this exponent as I am writing 1, 0 on the end of the number. This 10, you don't need to do anything with it. You're just looking at the zeros. I mean the exponent to write how many zeros. One exponent, one zero. One zero, one zero. All right, next thing. Seven times eight is 56, so write the basic fact. And now how many zeros are we going to write on the end of this number? Well, the exponent's two, so I'll write two zeros on the end of the number. And so seven times eight times 10 to the second power is 5,600. Let's extend the pattern now. 7 times 8 is 56. 
The exponent is 3, 10 to the third power, or 3 powers of 10. That's 1 power of 10, 2 powers of 10, 3 powers of 10, which is the zeros. So 7 times 8 times 10 to the third power, 56,000. Now, this one's a little bit backwards, right? This one requires a little bit of thinking. <coughs> this is uh, the next one, by the way, um, page 22, number 4. First of all, they don't tell you the fact. And you should know, 6 times 5 equals 30. Uh, and now you have to identify what did you multiply that basic fact by to get 300. And so here's how I would handle that uh, problem. I would highlight or circle all of the zeros that aren't the basic fact. So I know 6 times 5 times something equals 300. But if I know 6 times 5 is 30, actually I'm kind of highlighting the basic fact, aren't I? I know 6 times 5 is 30. I can figure out how many powers of 10 did I multiply that basic fact by to get 300. Well, if there's an extra 0 on the end of there, I know I multiplied it by 1 power of 10, right? So 6 times 5 times 1 power of 10, which is 10 to the first power, will get me 300 because I can see the extra 0 there. Here we have the basic fact, which is 30. And uh, I know there's a comma in there, but really it's just 30. And how many zeros are on the end of the 30 now? There's two, right? So I multiplied it by two powers of 10. Each zero equals a power of 10. So I'm going to write that as 10 to the second power or two powers of 10. Similar, uh, now I have three zeros on the last instance. How many powers of 10 did I multiply that basic fact 30 by? It's 1, 2, 3, so it's 10 to the third power. All right, so on, on these, you kind of have to work backwards. This is more in the realm of algebra, but um, it's something that fifth graders can handle if they have a method of doing it. So again, highlight either the basic fact or the zeros, but don't highlight both. Your task today is to work on page 22. I already gave you two of the uh, answers on page 22. Please continue, and good luck with 90%.